Hey everyone, so as my Instagram has grown over the last couple months, I've gotten more and more questions on my 99 Camper CRV on how I built it, how it works, and overall just interest into the build. So I thought I'd do a walk around for you guys and show you the specifics of how it works, how I put it together, and how I fit a full six by four foot bed inside of a relatively small compact SUV. So first off, the platform for this build is my 1999 Honda CRV five speed manual with real time all wheel drive. Manual and all wheel drive was a combination I was looking for for a while, and it narrows it down to Subarus, CRVs, and in the early generation RAV4s. I chose the CRV because it's bigger, it seemed a little bit more reliable, and the parts seem more readily available over the rest of those. Especially with the Subarus, I've already had a Subaru, I've already blown one up, I just don't wanna go down that route again right now. <laughs> These are super reliable, super dependable, easy to work on, and most importantly, because we're on a budget, very cheap to work on. New engines for these things, certified under 60,000 miles, are like 900 to $1,200, it's crazy. But yeah, so far I've replaced the entire suspension system, new tires, of course we've got the light bar and the ditch lights on it now, and then just a couple of small things like replacing the inside door handles, some window trim, that kind of stuff. And then a huge thing is I recently ceramic coated the paint and it made it look so much better, but more importantly, it's so easy to clean now. I don't have to be waxing every six months. It's just much easier to take care of and much more practical for the long term, especially taking it on thousand mile road trips all the time, coming back. I don't want to be washing this thing once a week. It's not an amazingly capable car. The all-wheel drive system only kicks in whenever the front wheels are spinning. So you have to be losing traction for the all-wheel drive system to actually get the rear wheel spinning. But in snow and slippery conditions, when those front wheels are spinning, it works great. And then of course, it just being a CRV, it doesn't have a low range, which really makes it so you can't do anything extreme off-road. But it can definitely hit some moderate trails. So we'll start with how I store everything. And as you can see, it fits in a very small area. So the bed frame is in two halves, one half right here, one half right here, and everything else is in between. Here's the mattress, here's my water, and then I have the crates, traction pads, everything in between. So my entire setup fits in like this three by three foot square little storage space in my garage. It takes up very little space, which is super nice, especially over a rooftop tent, which we'll get into later. So we'll start with putting the bed frame into the car. First, you just have to open up the rear. And then we just have to take out the headrests. One right there. And then one right here. Put that on the floor and pull up the bottom of the seat. Put down the back of the seat. They don't sound very good. I think they need to be oiled. But just do that for both ends. And this is all the space that the setup uses while I'm driving. So we have the entire front still available. We can lean the seats back, you know, it's very comfortable. So now I'll just start moving everything around so I can get the bed put in. Traction boards out. This is one of the crates that I use for like storage. Of course, we've got the comforter. Especially during freezing temps, you need like two or three blankets. A big old foam mattress. Oh, another crate. And then here are the two main platforms. Here is the rear one, and then here is the one that goes in the front. And we're gonna start with the rear one. All right. So on this, there's two latches right here, and these go in that way. I like to do this. It is a little tight, but once I've done it a couple times, I've gotten used to it. Put it in, just slides perfectly into the space. And boom, this is now in. And as you can see here and over there, it perfectly fits into that gap right there, maximizing the amount of room that we can take advantage of in this small car. Now I've found that it's easiest to put the top half in through the side door. Just goes in like this. Slide it on in, try not to get it caught on anything. Bringing this down. It sits perfectly right there, and then I just have to line up the latches. So there's two latches on each side. You can see one over there and one right here. We're going to latch it up. There's one on top, and then the other one is down below. Do the other side real quick. One on top, one down below. And now these two pieces of wood are one. They move around together, and I can press down anywhere I want with all of my weight and it's entirely sturdy. And then of course the reason that the bed just isn't on the ground of the CRV is so that we have storage under it. And as you can see, it goes super far back and we have plenty of storage. Usually we have all the food and like utensils and cooking stuff right here. And then behind that there's like pots and pans and then right behind there in this area, <laughs> is where we keep all of our clothes and stuff like that. And so the big trick to making all of this work is this piece right here. 
So as you can see right now, the seats have been folded forward and that's basically all you need to do to turn this into the sleeping mode. So you take this piece right here, as you can see, it's moving around. There's a little hook right here that keeps it in place. Undo that real quick and then just fold it forward. And just like that, that adds an extra foot onto the end of the bed, which makes this a full six by four foot bed or otherwise known as a full size bed. Whenever you're done sleeping, you wake up in the morning, just fold this back put on the little latch, fold the seats back, and you're ready to go. So that's kind of the secret to making this whole thing work. And now that the platform is in place, we can throw in the little foam mattress real quick. This mattress is directional. I have cutouts right here and right here so that the foam fits perfectly into place in the corners and then you have your mattress inside and what this is is just it's a simple memory foam two inch it was like 40 dollars at walmart mattress topper and then another like blanket style mattress topper this they qualify this as like 1.5 inch pillow lift or whatnot uh on top of that and these combined make it a really comfortable sleeping experience it's basically the same thing as a bed and this is great because the more space in between the bed and the roof the better for me as i am a little bit of a bigger guy so having this mattress this size has been fantastic and of course at this point it is a full-size bed it is in full comfy mode so i'll put my feet at the end and as you can see i still have a little bit of room like an inch or two at the top i haven't had any problem i can fully extend in this and it's been great so i am sleeping with my girlfriend in here the majority of the time and that's also been no problem i sleep like this and she's small and she has more than enough room over there as you can see even with me like this kind of spread out there's still more than enough room on this side for two people. We actually haven't had any problems in here whatsoever with space. And then for storage, it's super simple. Just two crates go right here, and then I put my stove right there, and that's literally it. People like to get really complex with the storage on their vans and trucks and that kind of deal with huge drawers, fold out everything, and that's awesome, it's great, it's really cool, especially for like Instagram pictures and that kind of stuff. But one, super expensive, two, super heavy, and three, once you put it into place, you can't change it at all. Uh, you know, a lot of times I need to get rid of one of these and put stuff behind there. I need more backpacks behind there, blanket store, you know, whatnot. And if I put drawers in place or anything like that, one, it would be so much more cumbersome to take in and out. And then two, uh, I couldn't change it as I go. So these have been great. I haven't had any problem with these. They slide out, go back in. Oh, Super easy, that usually doesn't happen, I promise. <laughs> and for now, I'm sticking with these and not gonna make it any more complicated. I do have a big fold-out table though. This thing has also been great. I just made it so it's two hinges and then a big paracord line that actually goes through the entire thing, so it's super strong, you know, relatively for being bolted into plastic. Then the actual table itself is literally just extra plywood I had over for making the bed. And uh, my girlfriend, Lily, she painted a whole bunch of cool stuff on it. As you can see, there's actually a little CRV going down the road into the mountains right there. <laughs> and then I got a epoxy top kit from Home Depot. It's just basically so you can have this like little thin layer of epoxy on top that protects everything and it's super durable. It's been super nice, really easy to clean, and this table has been great so far. And it just takes two seconds to put up and down, which is awesome. This is where we do the majority of our cooking, and then whenever I get the drone out, I can just throw everything across this. And then the CRV comes with a little bit of extra storage in here. I haven't really found out what I want to use this for yet, but I'm sure I'll use it for something at some point. There's a decent amount of storage in there. And of course, one of the quirky things with the CRV is that it has this like hook right here. I almost always use this for a trash bag to be hanging right there and then it hangs right here. So I can be cooking over here and then just throw stuff in the trash over here. And that's kind of the basic setup for this thing. Tuck that in, you know, the bed's in there. Of course, I'll usually throw blankets in there, but I'm not actually gonna be using this right now. And one super nice thing is that I got all this tinted at 5%, so you cannot see in here whatsoever. If it's nighttime and we have like a light on in there, then you can see in, but other than that scenario, no one can tell you're camping in here, which is great, which is another benefit over a rooftop tent. And then we have my water storage. A lot of people don't know what this is. It's about four and a half gallons of water. And I wasn't really sure if I was gonna need this at first. It kind of looks ridiculous on top of the CRV, but while we've been camping, this has been amazing especially for like stealth camping in the middle of nowhere. You know, just having water that you can wash your hands with, brush your teeth with, or like wash dishes has been absolutely incredible. And I haven't even gotten close to using all the four and a half gallons. So this has been great, but this is also something that a lot of people like to go way overboard on. I see people try to pressurize these, you know, they have constant air monitoring systems, making sure air is in there. And that's just not a good system to me. I mean, because if you fill this entire thing up with water to get the maximum capacity for water, right? Then there's not really anywhere for the air to go. So that means you pump it up once, it gets to like 100 PSI, then you have pressurized water for 
for like a couple of seconds. Then once you use more water and you have more space for more air, then you can pump it up more, but it's just this constant process and that didn't really seem appealing to me. And then having the pressurized water, you just waste so much water. So this is just purely off gravity. On top of the car, the difference between the car and the ground is more than enough space for you to have a decent amount of pressure at the hose. It also just makes it super easy to operate. I have this little bung right here with this little cap that screws on there. So that just screws on and off. It has a little tether so it never comes undone. A little bottle cap right in the middle there that I epoxied in. And this is how you fill it and how you drain it once you're done with the trip. I just fill it all the way so it's completely full. So I get all the storage I can possibly get out of this thing. Tighten that up and then turn that, you get water. Close it, no water. Really simple, no kind of BS going on here. It's just four and a half gallons of water or so, you know, around that. You get water, you don't get water. It's just really simple and I've actually come to love this thing. And then this whole thing just straps to my roof rack with a couple of like pull straps and it stays on there super sturdy. I can move the entire car with this whenever it's on there. So it's not going anywhere. And one more thing I did very much on purpose was, you know, I have my two light pods right here and my big light bar in the front. And that's really nice to have when you're driving in the middle of nowhere and it's just pitch black outside also really nice for deer. I already hit one deer, not in this thing, but in another car and do not want to hit another one. But what a lot of people do is they put the lights on switches like right here or something. You know, I like, I want the option to be able to use these on the highway at night. And I'm not going to do that with a switch because in case someone comes around, you know, we're driving at like nine, there's not that too many people. But if someone comes around, I want to be able to turn off really fast so I don't blind them because that's really dangerous. So what I did instead is I just hooked up my light pods and my light bar to my brights. On this car, the brights actually aren't that much brighter than just the normal lights. So I thought I'd just hook up the brights to the light pods and the light bar and that way I can turn them on super easy and if I see anyone coming around the corner or coming towards me I can flip them off just super super fast just as you would with normal brights. So that's just the primary sleeping setup. Super easy, super simple. I did not want to overcomplicate this kind of thing like a lot of people do in this segment. But now a couple of really key accessories besides the water that make living on the road much more doable and you know less kind of crappy is one this thing right here a large portable battery bank has been absolutely amazing. I believe it's around like 240 watt hours of battery and it's been more than I've ever needed. I've never gotten this thing below like 95%. And a big part of that is the fact that you can charge it in the back. And then the CRV, it's super cool. Most cars from this area did not have this feature, but it has a 12 volt power socket right in the back of the car. So I can just leave this plugged in back there. It charges while I'm driving and I can just plug anything I needed into it. You know, we drive for on average two to four hours a day and it takes about two and a half hours to fully charge this up with the car setup. Say I wanted to use like a heated blanket overnight or something along those lines, something that sucks up a lot of power. And I drained this down, got down to zero by the time we woke up. It'd only take two and a half hours to charge back up over the course of the day, which we've I think always done whenever we're on a trip. We almost always drive at least two hours. So something like this, especially with camera gear, drones, GoPros, that kind of stuff is almost essential. And it just makes going on the road for long bouts of time that much more practical. And this is kind of only if you're doing off road stuff, especially in a car that isn't super capable. But something like a traction board or a tow rope or something along those lines, just recovery gear in general, I carry these and a tow rope and some D rings. So if I get stuck, I can try to get myself out or if someone else is there and I'm really screwed then someone else can try to pull me out as well. Uh, I think that is the bare minimum for stuff. If you're gonna do any sort of off-roading in the mud, sand, no matter what you're doing, that is the bare minimum you should have. Getting stuck can be a dangerous scenario and it can really suck if you don't have the right equipment. So having the right equipment, just being a little bit more prepared with this kind of stuff. All my recovery gear was like just right around hundred bucks, which is almost nothing, especially to get you out of that kind of stressful scenario. It's just really important and really a smart idea to have. Even if you're just going to like a mountain to see the snow or to go snowboarding, something like a toe strap goes a long way, not only for you, but if someone else is stuck, you can try to help them get out of a really bad scenario as well. And yeah, I think that wraps up this overview. Like I said, very simple, not complicated, but also very effective. We can stay on the road basically indefinitely at this point. It just comes down to bathrooms and showers. During the summer, I can shower with the water or during the winter, we've just been going into campsites every other day. And then bathrooms, of course, so there's bathrooms everywhere. That's a pretty easy one to solve. My entire camper setup in the CRV, the setup that allows us to go weeks on end is around $350, $400, depending on when you can get it. You know, wood was super expensive a couple months ago. So, so but overall, incredibly cheap. And that's really important, especially nowadays, I think where people are going kind of right to rooftop tents. I had a rooftop tent. It was super amazing. It was super fun, but there's definitely downsides. One of them being they're absurdly expensive. I almost bought another rooftop tent right whenever we were doing this. And it was about the same price as my car. So that's that's, you know, it's not great for a lot of people. And especially if you're not using it all the time, it's kind of a waste of money in my opinion. And that's especially due to the fact that for the most part, they're kind of
kind of worse than the in-car camping setup. Like I said, I've had a nice CVT rooftop tent that was I can compare directly to this. And the setup and takedown of that is super fast compared to something like a normal tent, but still much slower than this. This literally takes like 15 seconds. And while most people don't think it's a big deal whenever you're in freezing conditions or you want to get on the road really quick, that really makes a difference. Also, whenever you're on the road for days on end and you're doing it one day after another, putting up and putting down a rooftop tent can kind of get tedious. Then you have cold conditions. A car is going to be more insulated than a rooftop tent in almost every scenario. Even in my rooftop tent, I had the extra super expensive insulated blankets to go around the rooftop tent, and this is still miles better than that. And one huge thing that I didn't even consider whenever I was buying a rooftop tent is any sort of wind. Even on mine, mine was it had a hard shell and the fabric around it was pretty taut. It wasn't like a loose rooftop tent with, with the fabric just flapping around. Any sort of wind over like five miles an hour, I would say, really makes it like almost impossible to sleep most of the time. And what makes that worse is that most of the time the tents are mounted on top of a car, you know, well off the ground where it's even more windy. And then God forbid it starts to rain. If it starts to rain, and especially if it starts to rain hard, there's very little chance you're sleeping unless you're just one of those people who can zonk out no matter what. And then finally, gas mileage. Putting a giant brick on top of your car is gonna reduce your gas mileage and gonna reduce your handling. It makes your car much more top heavy. You know, I had my rooftop tent on my Prius, which was hilarious in and of itself, but that dropped the gas mileage from about 34 or 35 miles to the gallon to about 27, 26 miles to the gallon, which is a ginormous decrease in that gas mileage. And on, on the other hand, with this in-car system, of course, you're not adding any extra drag besides the water tank on top. I didn't even notice a difference in gas mileage whenever I put that on top. And I measure this thing's gas mileage every single time we do a road trip, and it's averaging 25.3 miles to the gallon right now, which for a full-on camping setup that we can live weeks out of is super good and kind of unbeatable. And that's why I've personally chosen to go this route instead of rooftop tent. You know, my, my scenario, my personal opinion, works a lot better for me and is, you know, a lot more financially viable. <laughs> yeah, I hope I have answered every single question you guys can possibly have about this camper. I hope you guys like it. If you have any suggestions or any more questions you would like, drop them down in the comments. I'll definitely answer them. And yeah, I hope you guys like the setup. I hope this can inspire you or give you some insight if you want to do this on your own. And other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Whoa.